now i want to discuss a new object okay. which is called yeah go ahead please uh, uh, sir um, the triangle inequality for matrix norm how does it hold it was not mentioned in the properties of uh, matrix norm satisfy triangle inequality that is the definition of a matrix norm a matrix norm must satisfy non negativity positivity homogeneity triangle inequality and sub multiplicativity oh okay so basically matrix norm satisfies all the properties of the vector norm in addition it needs to satisfy one extra property which is that of sub multiplicativity okay so the spectral radius row of a of a matrix is row of a is the maximum mod lambda such that lambda is an eigen value of a okay so this is the definition so given a matrix a you find uh, all the eigen values of the matrix and then you look you ask which eigen value has the largest magnitude magnitude and that value is called the spectral radius of a matrix a but uh, you know this uh, spectral radius is a fascinating object it it has lots of very very interesting properties um I'll, I'll i'll tell you one to begin with um uh, and so it, it has a it has the following universality property so suppose um, lambda is an eigen value of the matrix a so what that means is that mod of lambda is going to be less than or equal to rho of a because rho of a is the largest magnitude eigen value and and there is at least one eigen vector corresponding to lambda so suppose um, um uh, so the so there is uh, and there exists um at least one eigen vector um corresponding to an eigen value with magnitude rho of a okay so now uh, of course there's also an eigen vector corresponding to lambda but i'm interested in the eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value whose um, uh explain explain whose uh, whose magnitude is rho of a yeah is there a question yes sir sir what if uh, i uh, lambda is imaginary lambda can be complex valued no problem still there will be eigen vector yes of course okay okay Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point is that, given any n cross n matrix, um, it will always have n eigen values. Some of these may be real valued, some of them may be complex valued. So since complex numbers are a generalization of real numbers, we can say that any n cross n matrix will have n complex valued eigen values. The some of these eigen values may be repeated. now corresponding to we'll see this 
later, but corresponding to every distinct eigenvalue, there will always be at least one eigenvector. When eigenvalues are repeated, it's possible that you cannot find. By when I say distinct, I mean a linearly independent eigenvector. So, in other words, an n cross n matrix will always have n complex eigenvalues, but it may not have n linearly independent eigenvectors. But corresponding to every eigenvalue, every distinct eigenvalue, there's always at least one eigenvector because by definition, an eigenvalue eigenvector pair satisfies the equation ax equals lambda x. And so if you can't find an x such that ax equals lambda x, then that cannot be an eigenvalue of the matrix. So basically, since um, uh, since rho of A is the maximum magnitude eigenvalue, if I consider that particular eigenvalue that gave me rho of A, there is a vector x such that, uh, so if uh, so if I, if I consider, so let's say consider. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, based upon the definition you gave, uh, yeah, will it be the interpretation like this that, uh, the spectral radius uh, defines the um, capability of matrix A to uh, the maximum amplification it can give to a vector X. That is correct. Okay. But it's something that you have to prove. So, and when you say amplification, you have to also keep in mind when you say amplification in what sense? Okay, what what property of the vector x are you thinking of getting amplified? Okay, so um, uh, for example, hmm? direction of x uh, will not be changed in the same direction amplification should be considered. That is true. That is no, true is for any eigen any eigenvector of a. Okay, that is true for any eigenvector of a. Not necessarily, the, not only for the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue whose magnitude is rho of a. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. when you are thinking about, um, so you made a statement, you said that the uh, rho of a is the maximum amplification that a vector can experience when it is multiplied by a. So in other words, in your mind, what you're thinking of is that the vector x has a certain size or length. Okay, you measure it using some, typically you want to measure it with the notion of a norm. Okay, so for some particular norm, the vector x has some value. And then you look at the norm of ax and you see how much bigger the norm of ax is compared to the norm of x. In other words, you're looking at the ratio norm of ax divided by norm of x. And you're saying that the maximum value this can take, norm of Ax divided by norm of x, the maximum value it can take is rho of a. So that is correct, but it's important that to keep in mind that this is measured in terms of the Euclidean norm. It's only when you measure it in the Euclidean norm that the largest possible value of norm of Ax divided by norm of x is going to be rho of a. Okay, so now let me just continue with this argument here. So suppose I consider this, uh, uh, the particular eigenvector corresponding to rho of a. Okay, so there is some lambda corresponding to rho of a and corresponding to that eigenvalue, there is an eigenvector x and that satisfies ax equals lambda x. Now I'll consider a matrix x, which is of size n cross n and whose columns are all equal to x. So I just repeat this. Then what I'll do is, and note that AX is equal to the same scalar lambda times the matrix X. That's because each of these columns are multiplying A, and then when you multiply this column with A, it will become equal to lambda times that column and then every column gets multiplied by lambda. You can pull that right out of the matrix and you'll have lambda times x. Now, so if 
if you are given any matrix norm is a matrix norm then if I consider um, mod lambda times matrix norm of this x, this is equal to the matrix norm of lambda x. This is just by homogeneity, but lambda x is equal to ax. And then by submultiplicativity, this is less than or equal to the norm of A times the norm of X. Now X is non-zero and therefore the matrix norm of this matrix capital X is always going to be non-zero. So if I compare this last step with this first step, I can simply cancel out the matrix norm of X and I have the conclusion that norm of A is greater than or equal to mod of lambda, which is rho of A. Okay, so this is a fascinating property. So we defined rho of A to be the largest magnitude eigenvector of uh, eigenvalue of the matrix A. And it turns out that rho of A is a lower bound on any matrix norm you can define on A. So however you define the matrix norm, it can never give you a value which is less than this spectral radius of A. So I'll write that out because it's a very, very interesting and fascinating result. If is, a, is any matrix norm, And if A is in C to the N cross N, then rho of A is less than or equal to the norm of A. So a natural question you can ask is, okay, rho of A is the maximum magnitude uh, of all the eigenvalues. Um, so basically it maps uh, an n cross n matrix to a non-negative number and so is rho of a a matrix norm? Excuse me sir. Hmm? I have doubts. Yes. Sir in the above expression you have written lambda uh, mod of lambda is less than or equal to mod of a into like uh, ma matrix norm of a into matrix norm of x right? Then yeah. uh, and then how did you conclude from here to next step? Is it for all lambda above expression? No, no. This is for, so I wrote that here. Mod lambda is rho of a. Okay, you heard it. Okay, only for that particular lambda. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So I'm considering the eigenvector That's corresponding right. to the eigenvalue whose magnitude equals rho of a. Okay, sir. thank you. Of course, the other eigenvalues in the matrix A have a magnitude less than rho of, less than or equal to rho of A. So the norm of A is actually going to be greater than or equal to the magnitude of any eigenvector, eigenvalue of the matrix A. And in particular, it will be greater than or equal, I mean, norm of A is greater than or equal to the maximum magnitude eigenvalue of A, which is rho of A. It's like tighter bond, right? This is tighter bound than Tighter lower yeah, bound. It's a lower bound on so rho of A is basically a lower bound on any matrix norm. Yes, yes. Yeah, got it. Okay, so rho of A is not a matrix norm. Okay. In fact, it is not even a vector norm. on c to the n square. Okay, you can show this, it's not difficult. 
but it is a lower bound on any uh, for any norm of a okay of course you know i can always say um, you know if i want a lower bound on norm i can always say a lower bound on the norm of a is norm of a greater than or equal to 0 it's a non negative it's the non negativity property of the matrix norm but that is a trivial lower bound it's not very interesting but norm of a greater than or equal to rho of a is a very non trivial lower bound uh, and uh, so so that is the property of this rho of a now um it turns out that Excuse although me. rho of a cannot be a matrix norm it is um, it, uh, it it is actually the uh, it is the biggest lower bound you can find but rho of a is the greatest lower bound for the values of all matrix norms okay what do i mean by this so we just discussed that norm of a is greater than or equal to rho of a so pick any norm the value of that norm uh, that norm of a is going to be at least equal to rho of a so i found one lower bound on norm of a you can ask can i come up with a different a, a bigger lower bound on norm of a that is i instead of row of a think of maybe you can find some some other function so and write an inequality that this is greater than or equal to some other function zeta of a okay and then what is this zeta okay and this zeta of a is greater than or equal to rho of a can you find such a function as something that is an even better lower bound on any matrix norm you can define on a the key thing is it has to hold for every possible matrix norm you may choose to define on the matrix a okay even ones that we have not yet discussed and we have no, that maybe people haven't yet discovered can you find a, a bigger lower bound the answer turns out to be no so rho of a is in fact the greatest lower bound you can find that will hold for all matrix norms of a okay that is what uh, we will show next sir yes sir i didn't get the concept of how its uh, amplification that a matrix can give so that's a side point we'll come back to that later essentially we were discussing about um if you look at norm of ax and then you divide that by norm of x okay this is well, this is in one way you can you can define this to be what is the amplification that x is experiencing when it is multiplied by a okay and the spectral radius is the largest such amplification you can get so is this same a uh, spectral norm only <clears throat> spectral radius and spectral norm are two completely different things so if i go up here sir actually my uh, apprehension was no, that I... it requires it to be in same direction what if there is another vector that is uh rotated but has still greater amplification by a ha huh. so i think you you need to spend a little time thinking about it whether this is possible or not so first of all let me maybe make one small point that the i mean the uh, th there is many more things we have to discuss before i can properly answer this question and uh, uh if i start discussing those we will just completely leave the point here so um but the only point i want to make uh, right now in terms of clarifying this is that the spectral ray the spectral norm okay 
is defined like this. It's the maximum root lambda where lambda is an eigenvalue of a Hermitian a. Whereas the spectral radius is the maximum mod lambda where lambda is an eigenvalue of a itself. Okay, it turns out, I mean, it's it's very, it's a good point you make because it's, uh, it's what is interesting here is that these two are very different objects. The spectral norm is a matrix norm. Okay, whereas the spectral radius is not a matrix norm. Okay, so now just let's just compare these two. So keep this in mind. Norm A2 is the max root lambda, where lambda is an eigenvalue of A Hermitian A. And in fact, we can show something like this. Yeah. The square of this is equal to the, I have to look at the largest value of Ax square subject to x2 equal to 1. Whereas the spectral radius is rho of a is the maximum mod lambda where lambda is an eigenvalue of a. Okay. So these are two different objects. Sir, isn't that definition the induced induced by L2 norm that we have for spectral norm? Isn't that saying that this is the maximum amplification that we can get in terms of Euclidean norm? Yes. So they're both related. And uh, if you're looking at a quantity like right, what you can show is that this quantity <clears throat> is actually equal to x transpose a transpose a x and this you can show is less than or equal to this norm of not four bars okay so Yeah, I think your point is basically that when you're talking about amplification to this norm of X, you should really be comparing this. You, you should be looking at, when you're looking at AX L2, this is actually equal to square root of AX L2 squared, which is equal to square root of X transpose A transpose a x and so it is actually more related to the spectral norm than to the spectral radius however we will see the connection between these two um, more closely uh, in a few classes okay let me get rid of this i don't know if that answers your question Yes, sir. I think it's more related to spectral norm, but in general, that is true for spectral radius. Yeah. yeah. With respect to so, any norm. Correct. So um, uh, later we'll actually explicitly discuss these kind of uh, amplification concepts when we dis discuss this thing known as the Rayleigh quotient. And uh, in fact, that can be used to derive an algorithm to find the eigenvalues of a matrix. Um, in which is a different algorithm compared to finding the characteristic polynomial and trying to solve for the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. So we'll discuss that more later. Um, but right now I, I want to say that the rho of a is a lower bound on the uh, on any norm on the matrix. You can you may choose to define on the matrix A. And in fact, you cannot find a better lower bound. This is the greatest lower bound. And that is because of the following lemma. Um, let A be a matrix of size N cross N and epsilon be some number, small number, which is strictly greater than zero. Then there is a matrix norm uh, 
such that rho of A is less than or equal to this matrix norm of A. So this matrix norm I'm going to de denote by these three bars is less than or equal to rho of A plus epsilon. Okay, so what is this saying? It's saying that no matter how small an epsilon you choose, I will be able to find a matrix norm such that the matrix norm of this particular matrix A is between rho of A and rho of A plus epsilon. In other words, you cannot find a different lower bound which will work for all A's and all norms. Okay, so maybe I'll write that here. So it works for, for all A and for all norms. Okay, so you won't be able to find another uh, norm, uh, another lower bound, which is actually bigger than this row of A. I can get, I can define a norm such that the norm of A is as close to this row of A as I wish. That is what this lemma is saying. So how do we show this? Um, the proof actually uses one result that we're going to again show later, which I'll state here, but you have to take it on faith for now, but we'll prove it later on. Um, it uses a result called the sure triangularization theorem. What this says is that given A, of size n cross n with eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda n, then there exists a unitary matrix U, which is of size n cross n, such that A is equal to U Hermitian delta U, where delta is an upper triangular matrix with diagonal entries delta i i equal to lambda i. Okay, so this is the result that we will use. Okay, any matrix, any n cross n matrix can be decomposed as u Hermitian delta u, where u is a unitary matrix and delta is upper triangular with the eigenvalues along its diagonal. Okay, so now let's set dt to be the matrix, a diagonal matrix with t, t squared up to t to the n along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, and then if you compute dt delta dt inverse, you can show, you can try a simple 2 cross 2 example to convince yourself that this is true, but you can show that this is equal to lambda 1, then t inverse delta 1, 2, t to the minus 2 delta 1, 3, up to t to the minus of n minus 1, delta 1 n 0 lambda 2 t inverse delta 2 3 etc and so all the diagonal entries will remain the same i'll get lambda n down here and i'll have t inverse delta n minus 1 comma n down here okay and all these are zeros and sub diagonal you have zeros everywhere okay this is what happens if you take 
dt delta dt inverse where dt is this diagonal matrix and delta is an upper triangular matrix. So basically if I choose t to be a very large number, I can make all the off diagonal entries as small as I wish. So, uh, so for large enough t, we can ensure that the sum sum of the absolute values of all off diagonal terms is less than or equal to epsilon. So that that means that this if I look at dt delta dt inverse this the one norm is going to be less than or equal to rho of a plus epsilon. Um, I think I'm out of time. There is actually a couple of more steps and I don't want to rush this last part of the uh, proof. And so um, it will take me maybe three or four minutes and I don't want you guys to feel like I rushed through this proof. So I'll just say it to be continued. So uh, a fun exercise for you to for you could be to see if you can actually show that uh, um, norm of A is less than or, uh, or rather. So the, ultimately what we want to show is that rho of A is less than or equal to for this particular. Um, so, OK, let me let me do this. I'll just say one thing here. We'll define the norm. So the, we want to define a norm such that the norm of A is between rho of A and rho of A plus epsilon. And we're going to define it to be the L1 norm of dt u b u Hermitian dt inverse. So this is using that S inverse A S form. So if I define it like this, it turns out that for this particular norm, rho of A is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to rho of A plus epsilon. So this is what we want to show, but we will continue this and show it a little more slowly in the next class. Mm -hmm.